This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we end today's show with Israel. Uh, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is continuing a public campaign to cast doubt on diplomatic engagement with Iran. Speaking before the U.N. General Assembly, Netanyahu accused new Iranian Prime Minister Hassan Rouhani of deceiving the world about Iran's nuclear program. Ahmadinejad was a wolf in wolf's clothing. Rouhani is a wolf in sheep's clothing. A wolf who thinks he can pull the eyes, the wool over the eyes of the international community. For more, we're joined by journalist Max Blumenthal, best-selling author of Republican Gomorra, Inside the Movement That Shattered the Party. His new book is Goliath, Life and Loathing in Greater Israel. Max, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, can you first respond to Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, and Israel, uh, the government's response to the openings between the United States and Iran? Well, um, with my book, what I really aim to do is, you know, this, this is a culmination of four years of my reporting from inside Israel, Palestine, in, inside Israel, Palestine, from inside Netanyahu's Israel. Um, he came to power in 2009 at the helm of the most right-wing government in Israeli history, and he's kind of occupying the center in Israel. He markets himself to Israelis as, you know, he appears in my book as the salesman, and he markets himself as a man who can go to the U.S. and market a lemon, who can sell a lemon to the American public because he speaks English perfectly. He was educated at MIT. He worked at Boston Consulting with Mitt Romney. And here he's returned to the U.S. Um, to sell the Israeli position to an American public that wants diplomacy, that welcomed Barack Obama's historic phone call with Hassan Rouhani. And Obama has been forced to sit with Netanyahu for 2.5 hours in the White House during a government shutdown to hear Netanyahu's complaints and lecturing. He's effectively become the BB sitter with Netanyahu more times than any foreign leader, the head of this um, country the size of New Jersey. Um, and so Netanyahu really looks kind of desperate and diminished at the UN, and he's, but he, I mean, he loves these animal metaphors, and he's, he's concocted this very belligerent and stentorian speech that really would maybe appeal to elderly evangelicals or an APAC crowd, but it's not resonating with the American public. Well, in an interview on Tuesday with CBS News' Charlie Rose, uh, uh, Netanyahu diminished the significance of Jewish settlements that many see as an obstacle to peace between Israelis and Palestinians. I don't understand why you think building settlements in now East Jerusalem is necessary. Now let me tell you something. To First of all, what find a solution in, let me, let me tell you when the world believes it stands in the way of. Yeah, solution. the world believes a lot of things, but the world doesn't get it. And, and here's what I think they don't the American get. president believes that. Well, let me let me tell you what I think is the issue, and then you can judge whether you agree with me or not. And the same thing I say to everyone in the world: the settlements and the territories are not. Cause of the conflict. Nobody they're, says that, but they are result. stand in the way of a solution. But, but here's the way they get a solution. They don't stand in the way either. Ninety percent of the Jewish population is clustered in the in uh, Judea Samaria and the West Bank is clustered in a tiny fraction of that land. It's not an issue. Mm -hmm. It's a bogus issue. Max Blumenthal, a bogus issue. The world doesn't get it. Well, a lot of is, is, uh, Jewish Israelis believe that, and they might cheer Netanyahu for saying that. A uh, majority of uh, Jewish Israelis are, are against uh, massive pullouts from the West Bank. And so this is also part of Netanyahu's appeal. And we also have to recognize, you know, I went into the Knesset, and, and in my book I interviewed a lot of the rising stars in Netanyahu's party. These How are, did you get this exclusive access? I called. <laughs> Um, and, you know, it's not particularly difficult. Uh, they want, um, Israeli politicians want PR, and this younger generation feels like the more pro-settlement they can be, the more extreme they can be, uh, the more votes they get. And so the younger generation in Netanyahu's party, the, the, the future of Likud favors annexing 60 percent of the West Bank. So does his economy minister, Naftali Bennett. This is the future of Israeli politics, and that's what is really appearing in the pages of my book, Goliath. How important is U.S. aid to Israel. What is the state of Israel's economy right now? Well, you, uh, Israel's strategic deterrence is completely contingent on its direct line to Washington. 
That's partly why Netanyahu is there. As I said, he's the salesman. Um, and you know, I went into Netanyahu's early writings when he was just emerging um, on the world stage in my book, and I dissect them and I talk about how he says that you know it doesn't matter if your position is just; you have to depict your position as just. He, he actually understands that Israel is committing human rights crimes in the West Bank, but he he is completely focused on the West, and the world does matter to him. So it's 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 interesting to see him come here and actually face a little bit of tough questioning and see him kind of. Um, um, you, you can see the desperation on his face. So I don't think this is helping Netanyahu, but ultimately it does help the right wingers in his party to, or to Netanyahu's right, like Denny Danone or like Naftali Bennett, who have said, we don't need the peace process. It's over. It's a failed. We don't even need to talk to the Palestinians. Let's annex 60 percent of the West Bank and give them Jordanian citizenship. And that's getting more and more popularity in Israeli society. You spent a lot of time in your book talking about the transformation of Israeli society and uh, the the growth of uh, intolerance among the the young the young people, the attitudes towards uh, not only to the Palestinians in the occupied territories, but uh, Arabs within uh, their their own country and uh, Africans as well. Could you elaborate? Yeah, I, I devote a lot of my book, actually most of my book, to what's happening behind the Green Line, to the area of Israel that will be legitimized under a two-state solution. And there's an active process in, in Israel of actually kind of moving the occupation back into Israeli society. I talk about how I lived in Jaffa, which is a uh, one of the, uh, you know, the remnant of the Palestinian community before 1948, which has now been incorporated into the Tel Aviv municipality, and a religious nationalist settlement has been built in the center of this Palestinian-Israeli area, creating an enormous amount of friction. There, my, my favorite restaurant in my neighborhood was firebombed by hoodlums from the West Bank. Homes have been attacked by hoodlums from the West Bank. Um, and, what do you mean hoodlums? I mean religious nationalist settler youth who stage uh, marches through this neighborhood, provocative marches chanting. Jaffa for Jews. And when I was there, they were doing so almost on a weekly basis. This is occurring um, in Jerusalem, not just weekly, but even daily. Um, and then you look at the polls, you look at the attitudes of Israeli youth. According to a poll by Camille Fuchs, who's one of the most reputable pollsters in Israeli society, a majority of secular Israeli youth, high schoolers, um, say that they would refuse to have an Arab neighbor. A uh, majority of Tel Aviv residents uh, favor the total expulsion of African migrants from Tel Aviv. Um, the, uh, Forty-eight percent of Israelis, according to a Ynet poll, which is a poll conducted by Israel's most popular newspaper, uh, favor are in, in support of settler price tag attacks. In other words, settler terrorism. A majority of Israelis. What do you mean price tag attacks? Price tag attacks are uh, basically vigilante attacks carried out by settlers against the Palestinian population in the West Bank. And whenever a settlement outpost is demolished, there will be a retaliatory attack with graffiti on the Palestinian home that says price tag. Only 33 percent of Israelis in this poll oppose that. A majority of Israelis in another poll fa uh, agreed with the statement by Miri Regev, who's a rising star in the Likud party, that Africans are a cancer in Israel's body. So this is the kind of racism coursing through the heart of Israeli society, and it's encouraged from the by the central institutions of Israeli society. You've, you've also uh, talked about the uh, ethnic cleansing policies of Netanyahu with the Bedouins. Yes. Could you talk about that as well? Yeah, there are 80,000 Bedouins living in the Negev Desert who are Israeli citizens who serve in the Israeli army. Uh, they live in unrecognized communities. Because they're not Jewish, they can't hook up to the electricity grid, they can't get public services, they can't have health clinics. And now, under a new plan called the Praver Plan, which was just approved in the Israeli Knesset, 40,000 of them will be removed from their homes, ethnically cleansed and forced into communities where, where the they'll be concentrated, this is the government's language, to concentrate the Bedouin in these Indian reservation-style communities. I just visited one of them, called Um al-Hiran, when I was in the Negev two weeks ago. Um, almost every building in this community has been marked for demolition. It is a real town. I mean, when you think of Bedouins, you think of nomadic people. No, these are people who've been there before the state of Israel was established, and they will be replaced by a Jewish community that had gone in the night before I was there to stake out plots and decide where they would live. And they're living in an artificial forest created by the Jewish National Fund in a barbed wire compound, preparing to take over. This is the plan for the Negev Desert under Netanyahu, and it's been approved across the political spectrum in Israel. You've spent a lot of time also talking to Palestinian leaders and youth, both in the occupied territories, but also within Israel. Talk about that. 
Yeah, I mean, the situation for them is incredibly complicated because they um, sit atop the totem pole of Palestinian society. Um, but at the same time, there, there is a program of official discrimination within Israeli society. Um, their schools are monitored by the Shin Bet. They can't be taught uh, the Palestinian narrative of 1948, a new law passed in the Knesset. I interviewed its, its uh, author. He's a 28-year-old immigrant from Moscow who doesn't even speak Hebrew very well, named Alex Miller. The Nakba law actually uh, penalizes Palestinian NGOs who participate in observation, in uh, observances of uh, the Palestinian dispossession in 1948. And so throughout my book, I'm interviewing young Palestinian citizens of Israel who are just as educated as I am and who are really feeling like they don't have a place in Israel. I interviewed two uh, young tech workers. You always hear about Israel as the startup nation. And they work in Haifa, in um, the tech sector. And they've both been interrogated by the Shin Bet, and they don't know why. And one of them made a really depressing comment to me. He said, I wish sometimes I could stop being an Arab and start just being a guy. And that's, that's an attitude we I hear a lot. have less than a minute. What were you most surprised by in your research for your book, Goliath? Uh, I was most surprised at the um, banality of the racism and violence that I witnessed and how it's so, t it's, it's w so widely tolerated because it's so common. And I'm most surprised that, you know, in my reporting on this, it hasn't made its way to the American public. And so that's why I did this book. When we hear about this kind of daily violence, you don't read about it on the pages of the New York Times. And I, I really asked myself why, and that's why I set out. Um, to do this endeavor, this journalistic endeavor, to paint this intimate portrait of Israeli society for Americans who don't see what it really is. We have to uh, end the conversation now, but we'll do part two and post it at democracynow.org. Max Blumenthal, award-winning journalist, best-selling author. Uh, his latest book is Goliath, Life and Loathing in Greater Israel.